Alfred is pushing a 50 kilogram wood box on a wood floor. Francine is pushing the same box on snow. Both push with a force of 300 newtons. Whose box has a greater acceleration? Fred says since the boxes have the same mass and the same force, they will accelerate the same. Francine thinks that her box will accelerate more because she has less friction to overcome. Who is right? We're going to talk about friction. And our general equation for friction is that the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. Mu is the coefficient of friction, and it depends on the materials that your objects, uh, the two objects that are interacting. So for example, wood on wood is going to have a different friction than um, metal on metal. Another way we write friction is with the lowercase f. And we could rewrite this the same way, except using lowercase f instead of force of friction. So mu depends on the materials. Mu also does not have a unit. And that makes sense because we have a force on the left-hand side and a force on the right-hand side times mu. So we want our, our units to be the same on both sides. So mu has no, no units. In this case, f sub n is the normal force on the object. So the first kind of friction is static friction. This is for an object that's not moving. It's standing still. So you push on an object, it has friction that keeps it from moving. Static friction uh, can be drawn on a free body diagram. We have our force of our push, which could be our applied force also, our normal force, our force of weight, and we have our force of friction going backwards. Now in this case, you'll notice that the force of friction equals the force of the push, and that means that the net force on the object is zero, the object is not moving. Now if we push gently, friction push, static friction pushes back gently. If we push a little bit harder, the static friction will push back harder too. And eventually we can push so much to, to make the static friction reach its maximum. And it will reach a maximum, that is the point right before the object starts to move. So the static friction increases and increases and increases, reaches a maximum, and then it won't go any higher at that point. If your for applied force is greater than friction, the object will move. We also have kinetic friction, and we can write it as kinetic friction equals coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Now the coefficient of kinetic friction is not the same as the coefficient of static friction. They act differently. Kinetic friction happens when an object is moving. But what's different is kinetic friction will be the same no matter how fast you're pushing the object. So if you're pushing it slowly or pushing it quickly, you're going to have the same, uh, the same kinetic fr friction pushing back on it. We also have rolling friction, which we can write F sub R equals the coefficient of rolling friction times the normal force. And rolling friction happens for objects that turn, like wheels. It's different because they're not in constant contact with the surface, like in a kinetic friction where you're pushing a box. For rolling friction, each point on the wheel just touches the ground for a short time before the wheel turns to the next point. And so the result of this is that rolling friction is actually the smallest amount of friction, and that's why it's easier to push a box that's on wheels than a box that's just on the ground. So here's a comparison of our forces of friction. We use our same equation for all of them. The difference is our coefficient can be particular to that type of friction. So coefficient of static friction, coefficient of kinetic friction, coefficient of rolling friction. Static friction increases, so in terms of the motion, static friction will increase, reach a maximum, right before the object starts moving. Kinetic friction is a constant value while it's moving. It doesn't matter what speed it is. Same with rolling friction. It's a constant value during motion, no matter what the speed. Static friction acts on objects that are not moving. Kinetic friction acts on objects in motion. And rolling friction acts on rolling objects, like wheels. In terms of magnitude, and this is important, static friction is the largest type of friction. It's going to be the hardest to overcome. Kinetic friction is the second largest. It's smaller than static, but it's going to be larger than rolling friction. And rolling friction is the smallest type of friction. It'll provide the least resistance to motion.
So let's look at Fred and Francine's boxes and figure out which has greater acceleration. To solve this problem, we're going to use a chart that tells us the coefficients of friction for common objects. So we'll start with a free body diagram for the box. We have a normal force, we have a force of gravity, we have our applied force, and our friction force. We're going to look at Fred first. For Fred's box, we'll start in the x direction. The sum of forces in the x direction is the applied force minus the force of friction. And that is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the box. But what is the force of friction? Remember, our equation for friction, force of friction is the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now we've said that Fred is pushing a box and we want to know the acceleration. So if it's in motion, it's being pushed and it's not on wheels, we're going to use kinetic friction. So we have the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. But we don't know the normal force yet. To find the normal force, we're going to look at the y components of our force diagram and we're going to add those forces together. The box is not accelerating in the y direction, so it is going to have the sum of forces equal to zero in the y direction. So we do the sum of forces in the y direction is normal force minus the force of gravity, and all of that is going to equal zero because it's not accelerating in the y direction. That means the normal force equals the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is going to be mass times gravity. Now the normal force is not always equal to mass times gravity, but in this case, because it's they're balanced in the y direction, they are equal to each other. That means the normal force equals 50 kilograms times 9.8. The normal force is 490 newtons. Now we're going to go back here and figure out using the normal force and our coefficient of kinetic friction, what is the force of friction? How did I come up with a point two? We were looking for Fred. He has a wood box on a wood floor. So wood on wood, kinetic coefficient is point two. That gives us the force of friction for him of 98 newtons. Now we're going to take that force of friction and go back up here to find the acceleration. We plug in what we know. His applied force is 300. His friction force is 98. The mass is 50 gives us an acceleration for Fred of 4.04 meters per second squared. We're going to do the same problem for Francine. We know that Fred is 4.04 meters per second squared. Let's find Francine's force. Her free body diagram looks the same. In fact, all of the calculations will be the same, except the coefficient of friction will be different. So the sum of forces in the x direction, we're going to find the force of friction for Francine. And our force of friction equals mu K times normal force. We had to find normal force. It's going to end up being the same, but the same procedure. Sum our forces in the y direction, and we get normal force is 490 newtons. Now, our coefficient for kinetic friction, we have wood on snow for Francine. So our coefficient is going to be smaller, 0.06. That gives her a force of friction of 29.4 newtons. We're going to plug that into our equation in the x direction, and we get her applied force minus friction equals the mass times the acceleration. Solve for A, her acceleration is 5.41 meters per second squared. So whose box has a greater acceleration? Francine's. Francine was right. She has a greater acceleration because she has less friction to overcome. Fred would have been right if it was a frictionless surface, but because there was friction to consider, Francine was correct. Now we're going to look at what's called apparent weight. So Fred wants to lose weight without doing any work. He's going to get on an elevator and weigh himself while the elevator is at rest. He measures a weight of 650 newtons. But what happens if the elevator accelerates upward at 2 meters per second squared? What weight will read on the scale? And what happens if the elevator goes downward at 2 meters per second squared? And what happens if the elevator breaks? Now, we'll do that without Fred in the elevator, but let's see what the scale would be for a dummy of the same weight. So the apparent weight is the weight on your scale. and It changes depending on if you're moving up or down. The scale will actually measure the normal force, and the normal force is not always equal to your weight. It depends on whether you're in an accelerating frame or not.
So first, what weight does the scale read if the elevator accelerates upward at 2 meters per second squared? So here's our free body diagram. We have the normal force and we have the force of gravity and we have an overall acceleration upward. So let's note that the scale reads the normal force. The sum of forces in the y direction is normal force minus gravity and that sum is going to equal mass times this acceleration that he has. What is the mass? We only know his weight so we're going to find his mass using F sub g equals mg. We find his mass to be 66.3 kilograms. Now we're going to go back to the first equation and plug in the mass. We don't know our normal force. That's going to be what we're looking for. We know his weight and we're going to plug in mass. His acceleration, he's moving upward at 2 meters per second squared, so that's our acceleration. We solve for Fn and we get his normal force, or the weight read by the scale, is 780 2.7 newtons. So it looks like he weighs a little bit more if he's accelerating upward. What about if he's going downward? We're going to solve the problem the same way. The difference is our acceleration is going to be different. So our, our mass is the same. Now our acceleration, instead of being positive 2 per second square, we're going down. Actually, this picture is wrong and should not have an arrow up. Our acceleration should be negative, and that will give us a normal force of 517.4 newton. So his weight read by the scale is going to be less than his weight at rest if he's accelerating downward. And now we're going to put a, a dummy that looks like Fred in the elevator, and we're going to break the cable. And what is his weight going to look like now? So now we're going to approach the problem the same way. We get his, his mass. But now our acceleration downward is negative 9.8 meters per second squared because we have broken the cable. There's no um, acceleration up or down. It gives us a normal force of zero newtons. It will appear that he is weightless. This is actually what happens if you're in a space shuttle orbiting the Earth. The orbit is actually in free fall. It's falling towards the Earth at an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's why astronauts appear weightless in outer space. There, there is, in fact, gravity in outer space. The reason they appear weightless is because they are falling in the shuttle at all times.